there. It's me, Brianna, and you're listening to Are We Caught Up Yet? Marvel Edition. You can find us on youtube.com slash Save the Game Media and podcast services. If you want to show Save the Game Media some extra love and get early access to all of our content, you can find us at patreon.com slash Save the Game Media. Um, today, I'm joined by my co-host and friend, Sam. What's up? Ooh, the crowd goes wild. Round of applause. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Um, weather is is pretty terrible here in in England. Um, oh, that sounds so nice. So, that's whatever. Um, but still, I've I've managed to have a a few days on the trot. That's been a bit quieter. So it's been nice to recharge batteries because I need it badly. Um, yeah, I'm good. How about you? Um, I'm doing pretty good. Um, nothing too crazy. Um, the transition that I was kind of waiting on, I was waiting for my, my bonus and raise to go through, and that happened. And so I was texting mm. Kyle, another co-host, and I was like, oh, my God, I'm, like, freaking out because now I have to, like, start applying for jobs and, like, looking at moving and stuff. Like, for reals. Like, I have to, like, actually, like – and he's like, wait, so you self-imposed <laughs> your own, like, rules? And then because your rules fell through, like, you're now stressed? And I was like, yeah, that's accurate. So, mm -hmm. um, so good things, but still stressful. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to miss my therapist whenever I have to stop talking to her. She's like one of my favorite people. <laughs> mm. <laughs> ah, so, yeah, that's that's where I'm at. And just to transition, I've been reading so much still. Um, I believe I'm at 39 books for the year. It might be at 40. I'm not going to check, even though I want to. Um, I've read more than that, but... If a fan fiction is less than like a hundred pages, I don't count it. Like I won't like put it in my book count. I'll just say like I read it and not add it to the book count because I'm like mm, it's too short and it doesn't really count. So I read like I think like five or six fan fictions yesterday that were like 50 pages each. So kind of adds up to a whole nother book yesterday, but eh, I'm not gonna count it. Um so did that. What else have I been up to? Nothing. Just reading. Cool. Oh, and I watched the Main Girls musical in person. And then also watched the movie. And man, Renee Rapp is so beautiful. She's... <laughs> I'm a simp. Those are my thoughts. What have you been playing? Cool. Slash watching. Uh, I mean, I don't need to talk about what I'm playing. Um... What have I been watching? Nothing really. Um, I was still watching, trying to slowly make my way through Shogun. Um, still loving it. Uh, are they doing that one weekly or is that one? I, yeah, it was, it's weekly. I, I'm so far behind. I'm not even sure it, it might still be airing or the season might have come out. I'm quite a way behind, so I, I'm not sure on that, but it is definitely, it was a weekly release. Um, yeah, watch that. I d d finished... It's still going. ...a rewatch of um, the second season of The Bear um, with the news that Series three is in production and series four is technically also in production at the same time. Um, I think that's it. Oh, I've, I've, uh, I've, I finally started watching um, X Men 97, which is the um, reboot continuation of the 90s x-men cartoon um that's airing now on disney plus again weekly and uh we we may end up talking about it in the future i'm 
not decided yet um because I kind of need to see how it plays out and how much context it gives you because we aren't doing a thing where we're having to watch the entirety of the the old cartoon like that is just so much stuff but they've done a good enough job of cluing people in who maybe haven't watched it so tbd on it but if i don't if we don't talk about it i will say that i think it is excellent um far exceeded expectations for me um and this is coming from someone who wasn't a, a massive fan of the original cartoon um but i think that what they're doing even just in the first three episodes that have aired now at time of recording um it is phenomenal both in terms of animation art style what they're doing with the characters the dialogue all of it is sophisticated and um yeah very impressive okay i have no feelings about it <laughs> yeah. um i will say just because you said incredible animation it reminded me i have i have caught up on solo leveling which means like it's an anime. It's finished for the season. Um, all 12 episodes are out, and the animation for the last episode was incredible. It was so good. So that's what it reminded me. If you guys haven't watched Solo Leveling, I highly recommend it. Um, I will say, just while we're talking about superheroes as well, my therapist recommended that I watch The Boys, which I thought you'd think is interesting. Um Specifically, rec she recommended it because she thinks that the consequences of the magic system are interesting. And she said that I would enjoy the consequences of the magic system as well. Um, yeah, I think that's fairly accurate. So, yeah, she recommended that and Legion. Those are the two TV shows that she recommended. Oh, that's – wow. She, the, the, your, your therapist is well-versed. Jesus. <laughs> Recommending Legion. That's a that's – a, <laughs> That's a deep dive, not bottom of the barrel thing, but that is real. You got to be really in the weeds to know about that. So, although technically, I guess as a therapist, that does make sense more so than not, because it is about people with powers, but in a mental institution. Mm. So, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. So those are the two recommendations she's given me recently that I may check out. So for now, I'm in the middle of rewatching Avatar The Last Airbender because it's really good. <laughs> okay, you guys, today we are here to talk about Black Widow, the movie, not the bug. Gross. Um, they really should have thought that through. I mean, she she's named after the, the spider. I know. It still upsets me. Okay. Couldn't we have found, like, an animal that has, like, the same thing? What, that looks and does the things a spider does? Yeah. Well, that would be a, that would be a spider. Yeah, but I hate spiders. Can we find another one? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Couldn't we call her like leopard or something? I, don't know. That, I mean, that's infringing on the Black Panther territory. I think that's a little bit too close. Too close. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. Well. Okay. General thoughts about Black Widow. Focus. Um. Let's see. I uh, I had a really good time watching this movie. Um, I definitely, I will say that it's probably um, it didn't have the best story itself but I really enjoyed the way that they followed the storyline. Like the writers followed the storylines through from beginning to end of the film. And really told the story that or it feels like they told the story that they wanted. Um, so I thought it was really well written and executed and it was good. What about you? Um, 
I'm I'm often very mixed on this film. Like mm. I, it being the first film of Phase Four, and again, for context, Phase Three ended with Endgame and Far From Home, and then we had a, a year with nothing, which was unheard of. Then the Disney Plus show started, and then we got Black Widow. Um, so there was a lot of expectation built up. You know, like we had this massive crescendo with Endgame and Far From Home. So still don't agree that that is the end of Phase 3. It should have been Endgame. But anyway, mm. not only with that trailing off of that, following it up, but also the gap waiting a year, there was a general sentiment that, like, they're going to, not only do they have to, but they're going to hit the ground running. Um, and yes, like, we knew this was a prequel, and we knew that, you know, she's not going to get out of the film alive, spoilers, because she dies in Endgame. Um, or, or that, well, she does get out of the, she does get out of the film alive, but we know ultimately where it's going to lead to. Um The film doesn't really accomplish that. It doesn't hit the ground running. It doesn't propel us forwards. Um, it introduces some new characters, which is nice. Um, introduces a couple of new concepts. But ultimately, I think it falls short more often than it doesn't. Um, and the delivery is here that I warned you about. So I will continue my thoughts in about 30 seconds. Um, feel free to discuss whatever you'd like and fill me in when I'm back. Okay. So the first thing we're going to discuss while Sam is away um, is Sam, um, obviously. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I, I want to say that I really don't agree. <laughs> but I'll have to say it again when Sam comes back. That's okay. That's okay. Um, well, you guys, um, I will say, uh, Black Widow, one thing that, like, really surprised me, I know I'm kind of going off on a tangent, but the dad, um, in Black Widow, uh, what's his name? Hmm? David Harbour. I don't know why it shocked me to see him, but, like, I've seen, like, one episode and not even, like, a full episode of Stranger Things. But I recognized him and I was like, oh, that's the Stranger Things, dude. And to see him, like, look, like, completely different kind of threw me off. Um, not that that was, like, super important. Um, I will say, um, Yelena might need to be added to the simplest. Might need to be added to the simplest. Um who doesn't like Miss Florin Pew? Um, she Florence Pew. Um, she is gorgeous. She's absolutely gorgeous. And who doesn't want to see her being a badass? But 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 we'll withhold because who knows what's where they're going with this character. Um, so we'll we'll wait to add Yelena to the simplest, but it's a consideration. Um, also, now that I'm seeing David Harbour, like, style, like, in, uh, like, in his, like, more, like, runway looks, runway, that's not the right word, red carpet. <laughs> now that I'm seeing him styled in his more red carpet looks, sorry, I'm talking about, um, David Harbour. Uh -huh. Um, anyways, all I was saying is now I'm seeing him styled in his red carpet looks. He's pretty handsome. I don't think they did him justice in this film, but. Yeah, but that's the point. Yeah, he's like a deadbeat dad. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. But he could have been um, a hot deadbeat dad. Yeah, where where were we? Hot deadbeat dad. No. <laughs> Before were, I left. Yeah, you were giving your general impressions. Of the um film. yeah, I th I think it's there are a number of things that lift the film above what I think it ultimately is. And by that, I mean, there are very strong redeeming features. 
that I think make me look on it more positively than I would otherwise. I think ultimately it's not mediocre by any means, but just sort of like good, mm. like a flat, flat good. Mm. Um, but there are some things that are like excellent in it and that raises it just a little bit. That's realistically where I come down more often than not. Mm. Okay. I, I wasn't agreeing with what you were saying earlier, but I do agree with that. Mm. So sounds like, sounds like we're fairly aligned ish. Maybe. Um, I will say one of the other things I mentioned while you were gone. So just so you're aware, Elena, not adding to the simplest, but depending on her next appearances in Marvel, may need to. May need to. Hmm. Yeah. We'll see. Um. Time. Time will tell. I suppose. Time will tell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is. That is true. Um. Black Widow still not on the simplest. I don't know what it is. Just. Not. Well, I mean, that's not gonna. That's not gonna happen now, is it? Nope. Um. But yeah. Um, those were some very important updates I wanted to make sure you didn't miss. So, thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, David Harbour is six foot three. That's very tall. Um, okay. I've closed the tab now so I won't get distracted. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, I, so let's go ahead and start. General thoughts have been out of the way, so we're just moving on. Um, mm -hmm. I, for soundtrack, I actually enjoyed the licensed music that they used. Um, I thought that they used it well. Um, and it didn't feel like it was, like, egregious. Like, it didn't feel like it was encroaching on, like, Guardian's territory, you know? Sometimes it feels like, oh, they use a little too much. But not quite mm -hmm. enough. Um, anyways. Um, so I thought, I thought that they had a good balance. And I, the soundtrack, other than that, was fairly generic. Um, like the actual OST. Um, but yeah, that's my feelings on music. What do you think? Um, I don't necessarily like specifically disagree, but I will say that one of this is going to sound contradictory. One of the things that I think are is more excellent than not in this is um, some of the music that they use. I think, like, to to talk about it specifically, um, the opening like credits sequence. I think is probably no, no, no. It's not. It's not probably. It is the best one they've done. Mm. Um, I think stylistically, it's right on point like perfect um i think it's like appropriately gritty and grungy feeling um i love it, how it sort of makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable um and the the you this the use of the um smells like teen spirit cover is so inspired in my opinion i think that that music choice to go over the intro is like chef's kiss in my opinion um and then i'm going to go a step further mm -hmm. and i am going to say that yelena's theme is probably my single favorite ost track that they've done in the entire MCU. Interesting. I'll have to listen um, to that one specifically. It's I don't know. It's I think it's it perfectly encapsulates her character. I think it is undeniably and unmistakably Black Widow-esque. Um, it rises and falls perfectly in my opinion. So I I love that track. And technically, like that is kind of showing my hand a little bit in the sense that I do think that 
Yelena is probably one of the best characters in the entire thing. And by yeah. thing, I don't mean film. I mean Marvel in general. Mm, um, so is Yelena on your simplest? Oh, like near near the top, if not top. Mm, very yeah. easily. Um, I think she's just so endearing and charming. But you can tell that she's um, been hardened, you know. She's still very dangerous, but she's still got that sort of sweetness that you see when she's a little girl at the beginning of the film. Um, um, so I will say I'm listening to the theme right now. It's playing in mm -hmm. my ears. Um, I really do like this track. However, I then now have beef with the editors, maybe, because I did not notice this at all, like, in the actual film. Um, sure, sure. I will say I do enjoy, what, like, what you're saying. Like, it kind of has that eeriness, kind of feels kind of, like, spider-y, especially mm -hmm. at the beginning. But then it kind of gets the way that they add the instruments in. Um, it's very much like uh, Marvel's slash heroes kind of theme, kind of leading, like, uh, feeding into that sound towards the minute and a half mark, minute mm -hmm. arc somewhere in there. So I think that's interesting and I do like this track. And it, it, then they bring the chanting in. I think I'm not that, that, that is. But... Yeah. Um, it, yeah, like Yelena is, and I'm, I'm just a massive Florence Pugh fan in general, mm. um, have been for many years now. But, like, I think her casting is arguably as important as Robert Downey Jr.'s was for Iron Man. Mm. Um, like, uh, Scarlett Johansson specifically picked Florence Pugh to be her successor. She was like, oh, I want Black Widow to, in essence, carry on. And I need somebody strong and really competent at the helm of the ship. And I think that you couldn't have picked a better person. Mm. Um, I think she's not only the best part of this film, but I think that just inherently what she brings in terms of her dynamic to the rest of the universe, just by her being that not saying that she shows up all the time because she doesn't, but I think the traits that she brings is something quite refreshing um which is something that as we get further in obviously we sort of crave more and more refreshing new things that we haven't really seen before and i think yelena embodies a lot of that stuff yeah yeah i would agree with that um plus i think she just did an incredible job in the role period mm -hmm. um let's see okay yeah um i will say as much as i love this track i probably wouldn't add it to my music because it, it's a little too like intense to like listen to like soundtrack music you know mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's really good um go listen to it you guys because i said and moving on <laughs> Um, I'm going to say, shockingly, this this film does pass the Bechdel test. It's actually not shocking, but I would have been gobsmacked if it didn't. Yeah. Um, um, okay, one thing that I wanted to talk about specifically, um, partially because you brought it up, but also because it's like chronological before we start moving into our like character themes, blah, blah, blah. Um, the opening sequence of this film is so incredibly done. Like... I think that the opening sequence of this film is is so interesting. Um, and I don't know if they necessarily, like, they did, like, obviously end up coming back to, like, talk about all the Black Widows and stuff like that. But I, I just feel like they didn't necessarily fully capitalize on what they set up with this opening. But it's still incredible nonetheless. Um like having that like kind of like the the family dynamic and then like all of the like oh all of these kids have been kidnapped and and or sold and they're going through horrible things and like it was just like really well done mm -hmm. um so i wanted to call that out because 
that's like your first introduction to the film and i was like oh my god <laughs> again in in the same vein as yelena it feels different mm -hmm. to anything else that they've given us thus far it almost tonally feels, so. yeah it feels like they lean into a different kind of darkness that they haven't really mm -hmm. in the mcu because they've sort of like skirted around the edges of what the black widow program was but never really like actively confronted the realities of it like you know um N N natasha talks about like being sterilized in age of ultron i think mm. when she's speaking with bruce and you know stuff like that but even even then her saying it is like oh damn but to sort of get a more visceral visual depiction of not sterilization but just the process and the brainwashing and the conditioning and whatnot is um yeah it's it's really good in mm -hmm. a disturbing way yeah i definitely agree with that and i'm glad that they leaned into that like kind of more darker mm -hmm. tone um i feel like if they had tried to like filter that like it probably would have felt really weird um, I will say, just on, like, the sterilization thing, um, I did think it was, I thought it was a really good show-don't-tell moment, like, when he's like, oh, I get it, you guys are on your period, and they're like, we literally don't have a period, and they, like, say mm -hmm. it so casually, and then it keeps moving. I really enjoyed that, because <laughs> it was, like, it's, like, awkward, well, it felt awkward for me, like, in the audience, but it's not awkward for them, because it just is their reality. Yeah kind of thing so i thought that was a good moment mm -hmm. um okay don't let me forget to talk about the end of the movie i know you won't but just in case don't um okay so black widow um we of course know that this film is taking place before other events have happened that would prevent this from taking place um i was honestly Again, I go into these completely blind. Um, I had no idea that this was a prequel film. Um, I had guesses that it probably was based on, like, again, like, it's almost like there's this circle of Marvel stuff happening over here, and I've heard stuff, but, like, don't super pay attention to it and, like, stuff like that. Um, so I was like, okay, yeah. Um, but I could have also seen them trying to do something like they did with, like, loki wandavision because that that's like kind of seems to be the theme that they were on of like something bad happened but like how do we keep it going hmm. um i will say in the order of like stuff that got released i think that they did kind of release this in the wrong spot um yeah but maybe that's me i, was, I don't know no, well, I mean, they it was it was COVID, right? This was height of COVID, um, so the the film was meant to come out before. I think I've said before that this was meant to come out before any of the Disney Plus shows, and was meant to be the the return of Marvel after that year long break. But because movie theaters were shut down and they wanted to make money on the film um, rather than just release it just on Disney Plus um they they held off for as long as they could um and they did it simultaneously i don't know how much you know but they released it simultaneously in theaters and on disney plus but at the time disney plus had like a premiere access thing mm. so like it was a day and date release on disney plus but if you wanted it even it doesn't matter whether you're a subscriber you you have to you would then have to pay like an additional fee in the same way you would rent a film off of Amazon or something, mm. um, which obviously they don't do now because the, the pandemic is, for all intents and purposes, over. Um, but yeah, they they delayed the film, and I think that that hurt it. Like it just did, um, both in terms of finance, financial success, but also, like you say, placement. Um, and like getting into a wider thing, not, well, not necessarily that wider, but this film, despite COVID, is like 
maybe three, four years too late. Mm. Um, like we should have had this film before Endgame. Um, in my opinion, I think that a theme that is obviously, well, not obviously necessarily, but is becoming more and more prevalent as we start to get into these things, whether it's Disney Plus shows or films now, it's the idea of like succession, right? In the sense that we've had this massive crescendo with Endgame and so many people have sort of taken the back seat or like given up the mantle or died or whatever. And it's like, what comes next? Who fills those voids? And that's, you know, Falcon and Winter Soldier, his succession to being Captain America. You have WandaVision becoming, her becoming Scarlet Witch. We have this with Yelena essentially um, stepping up to the plate of the new main Black Widow. Um, despite that, I think that this is, this where it is, is a nice, like, gap filler to give us a little bit more context for Natasha but I think that having this and seeing her family dynamic and then having to see her in Endgame with that context of like she's sacrificing herself and we know about this family that she has you know we know about all these people that she loves and adores and cares for we, we know these additional things that she's gone through and then we see her sacrifice herself. It it still works in retrospect if you go back and watch Endgame. But like the fact that it's backwards is disappointing, like frustrating to me. Mm. I would I I understand what you're saying, and I definitely agree, but I would also push back just a little bit because I think that people would have expected Yelena to be an endgame then. And I don't think that that would have worked. Yeah, I mean the, true, but I think that there is a degree of leniency allowed in the same way that, like... Um, but if Yelena didn't show up, people would be like, well, this is literally the end game. Like, why I didn't? Very, very true. But I think that still that there's the <clears throat> leniency in that, like, I know it's... I get your point about it being the end game and the culmination and everything. And not to say, and th th also to clarify, I think that if this came before Endgame, then Yelena, etc., would have been in Endgame. Mm -hmm. um, but like, even if they weren't, there is a, a degree of leniency I think that would be allowed. In the same vein of like, people weren't specifically asking, well, why isn't Thor or Doctor Strange in Civil War? You know, um, like why? Maybe why? And obviously, we know why Hulk isn't there because Hulk is off on Ragnarok at the time. Um, but do you know what I mean? Like, I, I think that that not only do you have to like traverse the real world economics of like schedules and when are actors available for di for different projects, you can inter inter you can intertwine that with canonize things as much as they might be like a scapegoat to explain away something like a real world circumstance that prevented a person from appearing i think that you can justify it in the sense that and i'm not saying that this would be my choice but like just off the top of my head you could say that yelena wouldn't have shown up in endgame because she was off somewhere else in the world still trying to free other black widows yeah i I definitely agree, but I think it's an easier excuse when it's like somebody like Thor and it's like he's literally on a different planet in a different place. But like when the Earth is ending, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like it's like a little bit like uh, that mission is probably not as important as this, but sure. But, but I mean, like, but I think that it's, it's like, regardless, I, I definitely understand what you're saying with like the timing. I just, I don't know that I, I don't think that there, there would have been necessarily a good time for this film. 
Um, I, I disagree. I, I think that pretty much every male hero in the MCU had a, at least one solo film prior to Infinity oh. War and Endgame. Yeah, I mean, if they like, if this was like one of the origin films, then yeah. Hmm. I, I I I don't know if it would go that far back. Oh shit! I like for, for for this film as it exists, it should have been late phase three leading mm. up towards endgame um or even infinity war because we see at the end i know i'm jumping around but like at the end of the film we see her in the blonde hair and the jacket the yelena's jacket that she wears in infinity war um so like and, and despite of like when it, this film released it being a prequel means that this story and the introduction of Yelena and where she is in the world still canonically happened before Endgame. So the question of where is Yelena during Endgame, that's still technically a prevalent question yeah. in canon. Um, right, but so it wasn't it, it's like messy. a distraction, you know, because we didn't know at the time of watching it. No, but no. But I for, agree. Exactly. I definitely agree that it's, it's messy. Retroactively, it makes it confusing and it makes those questions arise because the film yeah. being a prequel we're like well definitely okay so why wouldn't natasha call on yelena or alexi for help you know um during infinity war and endgame mm -hmm. but is what yep. it is it is what it is um okay i don't need that tab open anymore um character themes okay um all right let's see so we kind of have a couple of things in here that i'm like kind of interested in so first of all there's she has a friend mm -hmm. in here that helps her whose name i can't remember at this time but i know the actor's name i can't remember the character's name <sighs> The, the actor is O.T. Fag Benley, but... Uh, Rick Mason. That's it. The most um, generic name. <laughs> that, yeah, that explains a lot. Yeah. Um, So she gets help from him. Have we seen him before? No. Do we see him again? Because, like... No. Oh, that's good. Just random throwaway character. Um, Rain check. Okay. I'm not 100% actually. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> anyway. I'm going to look it up. I'm not going to I'm not going to tell you, but I'm going to look it up cuz okay. I'm not doubting myself. Okay. Um I uh, feel like yeah, there okay. was look, there was a answer. like there was a lot there that like I don't know. I think I would have liked more not to be very clear. I don't I wasn't looking for like a romance between them. But I would have liked to see like more of that before or after this. Like, like the like where was this person? But because mm. I, I think that they had a really interesting relationship. <sighs> Anyways, so whole first first part, just again, kind of going over this. We have like the little opening sequence, and then um there is a let's see they steal the shield intel um see i feel like a lot of that stuff kind of went over my head because she was like do you have the thing that you need and i was just like huh <laughs> and i think i missed a lot of that context but that's okay um then we so we have that huge time gap and then in 2016 of course uh Black Widow is a fugitive for violating the Sokovia Accords. And that's kind of where we quote unquote start the film. Yeah, like. directly after Civil War. Yeah. Um, mm, mm, mm. I was kind of hoping there was like, there was a sequence. This is kind of random. Sorry, guys. Um, there was a sequence where like it looked like she might be going to Tony's like place. Um, where he lived when he has a kid, which I know, like, 
he might not have that place yet, timeline wise. But I thought for some reason they were going there for a second, which was weird. Um, I think it's like the visuals that they used of like the trees and show sure. and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, mm, 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 mm. is there anything else I missed in that first part where they were like stealing shield intel? Like I just feel like like it was like something that was like you should know what's going on, and I just didn't know what was going on. Um, no, not not really. I mean, it's it's just that um, Drakov is clearly somebody who is under the radar, manipulating things on a global scale, and um, yeah, I think that's it. The, like the the shield intel itself isn't important. It's just like. The, the mission is the the important thing, not the thing that they're getting. It's just that it's giving you context that Alexei works for Drakov. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's good to know. Um, I It's good to hear that I'm not as silly as I think I am sometimes. Um, okay. So but then we have, so Black Widow again on the run. She leaves. She goes to Norway. She meets Rick Mason. The dude mm -hmm. with two first names. And, oh, it does say, okay, this is an interesting note. I'm just kind of reading off a synopsis thing. It does say who's romantically interested in her. Uh, what? The, the, there was, <laughs> there prior to the film's release, there was a lot of, like, teasing that, there was some kind of romance between the two of them. And I think like in a, in a very subtle way, there is clearly like some kind of history mm. between them. Um, but yeah, like I, I, cer I certainly thought, and that's obviously contextual knowledge that you didn't have, but like in the lead up to the film and then watching it, I assumed on first pass that, it would be far more overt of a romance than it actually is because it's it's not. Oh yeah, I, I liked the subtlety of it. Where mm -hmm. It's like there there could have been something there, but she's Bruce, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. Anyway, so then we go to a um different location that I cannot remember off the top of my head right now. Um, where a widow has. We don't find out that it's a widow until after, but a widow escaped got this antidote to their brainwashing. Um, and then we see Elena chase her down, stab her, that whole thing. Um, I did not for sure see that coming that she was uh, also a widow. That I thought that was a really interesting reveal. Um, that wasn't telegraphed too much or maybe i'm just silly um i i liked that um i don't know thought it was a good the, the yelena was a widow no no the other person that got murdered by yelena oh yeah no um yeah no 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 yes sorry i'm with you i just had to process <laughs> that yes no you're okay <laughs> Yes, that it was. It's clearly like a, a widow that has gone rogue because she's broken herself out of the brainwashing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did they talk about how she broke out? Well, I mean, it, it, it would just be the same way that the others are eventually broken out. So, somebody... who used who used the, the stuff originally? Just some random person we don't know. Oh, I don't know. Hmm. That feels like a I don't know, but you know. No, I I I don't know. Oh, okay. Okay. Um so then we have of course that she sends the antidote to Rome, to Natasha. Mm -hmm. And we see that when she like goes to look through her stuff that's like from wherever she was staying before. Can't remember right now. Budapest. Um
Didn't they have a whole argument about how to pronounce it? They, they did. did. And I still don't know. That's okay. There's a lot of things I don't know how to pronounce. Um, okay. One thing I wanted to talk about was, so then we have her attacked by uh, Taskmaster, master, right? Mm -hmm. Am I wrong? Or is that a villain name that's been used for something else before? Um, it feels like. Well, I mean, the only you have certainly encountered Taskmaster before, but not in a film. Yeah, well, that's what threw me off, right? Is that like a Spider-Man thing? Well, he's just a Marvel villain. Oh, okay. But yeah, you 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 fought Taskmaster in the Spider-Man game. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I feel better now because it was like kind of like scratching at the back of my brain. I was like, mm, looks different. Familiar. Obviously, is um. Oh yeah, I remember. He's got he's got the guy with the the flip up thing. Yeah. Okay, I got it. Yeah, more of like. Well, I mean, there's, there's technically a skull mask in this film as well, but less so. Less skull e. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. I loved the Taskmaster fight there. That was like such a. Uh, it, I thought that was a really cool fight sequence. Really well choreographed, in my opinion. Mm. Um, yeah, I think <laughs> Taskmaster is probably the single most contentious part of this film. Really? Uh, yeah, by by a, a, a large margin. Okay. Um, because, I mean, it, it's probably abundantly clear to people that watch the film, um, but just in case, Taskmaster's gimmick is that they can study move sets and abilities and replicate them um, near instantaneously, which is what Taskmaster does in the Spider-Man game. It's what he does in the comics. It's what Taskmaster does in this film. Um, you see them employing various different move sets Obviously, cap shield, the swinging on the bridge from the the rope is Spider Man very clearly. Um, later on in the film, Black Panther claws at the fingertips. You have Bucky's knife flipping. Um, I and most other people are firmly on the side that. Taskmaster is like criminally underused in this film mm. in terms of the amount of interesting choreographed fight stuff that could have been done and not even necessarily just fight stuff but just stuff in general um, I, I think I agree with that like traversing around spaces um, you know th there's there's good stuff you know Taskmaster kick flips the shield up onto his arm in the same way Cap does Captain America does but it's just, it's not enough. Um, I don't think that they really beat Hawkeye's bow very clearly, obviously. Um, yeah, it's just underutilized. And like, this isn't a problem that I have, but a general sentiment is that Taskmaster shouldn't be a woman. Um, like they have fundamentally changed the character by changing the gender of the character. I don't have a problem with it. I still like this version of Taskmaster. Um, but it there is an argument that is primarily specifically around Taskmaster. Um, and like recasting and changing up races or genders is a thing that is prevalent, you know, in the discussion around that all yeah, over the place but... nowadays. What what is what is vital to Taskmaster's identity that needs the character to be a, a dude? Depends on what you're talking about. If you're talking about the fundamentals, nothing. Um, and I, the reason that I don't mind it is that having well, I know again I'm jumping. I apologize. Having it be the reveal that it's Dracov's daughter that is Taskmaster is 
very good in terms of weaving it into this specific narrative that they're telling that it makes sense but like that it's it's strange i i do agree and i understand that drakov's daughter could have been her own character like an original character in the same way that like sylvie was in loki it's I don't find it disappointing, but people say that it is disappointing that you had to sacrifice Tony Masters, who is the, the stereotypically canonical Taskmaster that now likely can't slash won't appear. That is an interesting character in and of his own right, devoid of the Taskmaster stuff. Um, so I, I understand it, but I think that they give enough justification for, for Draco's daughter here that i don't have too much of a problem with it i do think that it, it was ultimately unnecessary to make this specific character taskmaster um that you could have had taskmaster and draco's daughter yeah because she could have been a black widow easily easy, for sure or, or even just like a, a tertiary secondary villain that is isn't necessarily a, a black widow but is some other masked vigilante type um sort of like I, I get it it's not an issue for me but i get it and uh yeah that's i think most people's gripes and like criticisms of this film that sort of drag it down for most people is what they did with taskmaster um mm. both in terms of underutilizing and also just fundamentally changing who the character is mm. um i like the character it's it's a cool character um, that will obviously continue to exist because she survives the film. But yeah, it's it's an interesting choice. I don't know that I 100% agree with it, but it's an interesting choice. Mm. I think that I, I see where, where people are coming from. I, I definitely agree in the underutilization. I think that the problem is more of like the origin story probably changing rather than like necessarily the gender. Cause I think if they had like kept the origin story of like the main character that is taskmaster the same, but changed just the gender, I think that probably would have been fine. But since I, it's I, a I different agree. story, that's probably I do the agree. issue. That if it was like Antonia masters, as opposed to Tony masters <laughs> and she just inherently had those abilities of like copying move sets, and it wasn't some gimmicky chip in the back of the head stuff that was, you know, technology doing it as opposed to just inherently having that ability. Um, although that is like trying to ground and you know real world eyes it more that it's assisted by technology. I think that that is. I think you've hit the nail on the head there. That that is the the main gripe i think um but again it, it sort of it is what it is yeah too late now yeah um okay next piece here is when we actually go to budapest right um and then natasha and elena meet up and mm -hmm. basically from here on the film besides like one notable section of like talking it's mostly action <laughs> and explosions the rest of the film there's like one part that i was like there have been more explosions in this film than like anything i've ever seen <laughs> mm -hmm. like this film just doesn't stop and i will say that that is something that did bug me i was like okay okay we can calm down i'm pretty sure you've blown through the budget like 10 times with the explosion <laughs> Mm -hmm. um but story wise i did enjoy what they were doing like they went to go break out their awkward you good yeah okay uh <laughs> they go so they go to break out their their quote-unquote dad from a prison um and they destroy the prison which is funny i think it's funny um, probably not funny that people died, but I think it's funny that they destroyed the prison. Um, 
and then they go to get their mom again quote unquote mom and then they have like a heart to heart weirdness where they like are like kind of pretending to be a family because it's like what comes natural to them when they're together but they're also they understand that they're not a family now like they they're not like they don't have to pretend um and i thought that that was kind of an interesting dynamic where it's like you almost naturally fall into the dynamic but it's not real yeah and i think that again to to simp for florence Pugh, i think that like she just shines in this section mm. um whether it's off in the bedroom and you know um alexi starts singing american pie to her mm. you know and she's sort of like upset and crying but she's sort of mouthing along to the words and giggling a little bit as well like it just, it, she's so naturalistic in her performance i'm i'm jealous as a as a performer myself that she is just so effortlessly excellent it is very frustrating um and like even when they're sat at the table you know and they're talking about stuff and the mother is very you know blunt and to the point and yelena starts getting upset because she was like it was real to me you know mm -hmm. um i think that's one of the one of the more powerful moments of the film um because she's sort of like i think i can't remember exactly what she does but she's kind of like actually breathing through fending off crying um which is again something that i think a lesser actor wouldn't either have thought of or been able to execute that that there's such a layered performance going on from most of the people at that table to be fair but Yelena is um, on a, on another level, I think. Mm. Um, you have to excuse the simping. I just think that both as an actress and, and as a character, Yelena is like MVP by a country mile in this film. Mm. Um, you won't bug me with simping. I'm, I, I clearly enjoy simping as by my necklace. We, do, we don't need to. <laughs> Uh, okay, so then um, after we have that whole thing, we see kind of how the mind control works, kind of not, kind of get some family time, kind of get some good character beats there, which I, I enjoyed that section of the film. Um, and then we go to the Red Room, which I have to say, when I saw it, um, it reminded me so much of Laputa, which is the castle in the sky from the movie Castle in the Sky. And it kind of it kind of surprised me, like how much it looked like Laputa. Like, did you notice that at all? I have literally zero idea what you're talking about. Really? Okay, so there is a Studio Ghibli film called Castle in the Sky. I mean, I've heard of it, but I've, I haven't seen it, so I wouldn't. Right. Um. Let me hold on. Hold on. I got it. Don't even worry. Obviously, it's completely different genres, completely different genres. But the way that they kind of and they may have done this intentionally if they did. So like kudos to them. But the way that like the this island was kind of this island in the sky was kind of um, revealed, like the way that it kind of like they went through the clouds, the way things kind of opened up. It, it just reminded me so much of this Ghibli film that it kind of surprised me. Um, hold on, let me share my screen for half a second here. Share screen. I understand. Um, share and add to stream. So, like, like this is like what what we're kind of like the way that it. I, I wish that I had like the exact moment. But, like, you just have this, like, weird, like, all of a sudden castle that's kind of revealed in the sky and the way that the, the clouds move out of the way and stuff like that. And it's not necessarily the same shape, but it's similar enough that it kind of threw me off. I see. I was, I was just like, huh. Ghibli coming through. Woo! <laughs> um... All right. Well, let's keep going. Uh, 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 red room, um, secret facilities. Whoa. 
Um, dude, the line where she's like, I was trying to get you to like, like punch my nose, but you're not strong enough or whatever. I can't even remember what she says, but that was like, it was so funny to me. I was like, yeah, because he's a little bitch. Um, and then having the nerve here. To, to break your own nose on the table. Yeah. Yep. Badass. Yeah, really badass. And then to reset it moments later. Yeah. 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 But it, like, I think, I think that that sort of section perfectly encapsulates the. Not that it's like commentary, because I don't like the whole like anti-male suggestion. It's like it shows how feeble Dracov really was. Like he it seemed like he had all the power and nothing could be done to stop him. Everybody was completely subservient against their will to him. And like Natasha just did this one thing and immediately he was like completely on the back foot, kicked on his ass, you know, like if other widows didn't come in, he probably could have been dead within seconds. So it's like, it, it shows that it's very clearly like a, a, a house of cards, right? The, and I think that that is emblematic of potentially a lot of um, real world patriarchal systems that there is not necessarily that it has to be disrupted by a woman, but just that these things that we see as ironclad, unchangeable, um, realistically can sort of very quickly fall apart with little little intervention mm. um I, I like that because dragov is is like this ominous presence that they're talking about mm. throughout the film prior to this and he's like oh he's he's just the worst and he's he's evil and cruel and all of that and we see him and he is and then it like in like that he's a quivering not a quivering wreck on the floor but essentially you know yeah um i like that there's that flip for the main villain that realistically he's actually not all that yeah i mean i i enjoyed that as well and i i think that like i i did kind of enjoy like a lot of the commentary like you said that kind of comes with it where sometimes the people in power just have like like i think that like it's a lot of just like the people in power just have money yeah. That, that's really what it is. But they also have glass houses. Yep. Yep. Um, yes. I don't have too much to add to that because I think that you said it well, but I agree. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's basically all we have left here is just like this fight. I will say that the, normally I would find like fighting in the air ridiculous and i'd be like all right guys like we've we've kind of lost it here um but i i really think that they did like that sequence really well like i don't know if it was just like the cgi just looked really good or something but i actually really enjoyed that fight that was probably my favorite fight mm. i mean it they gave the justification for why i mean obviously outside of the fact that the red room is a airborne thing they gave the justification that Natasha leapt off to save Yelena. Mm -hmm. And then Taskmaster following them makes sense because it's not that you will get this in the slightest because you haven't seen it. But Taskmaster is, all for all intents and purposes, the Terminator. Mm. It's just this essentially robotic being in the state that... Um, she, she's in prior to being deconditioned that is just going to do a thing regardless like so antonia is just like dun 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 dun, dun just steamrolling through the air beelining directly to natasha 
um yeah i i, I agree it, it it is a little bit much but i don't think it ever crossed the line into complete absurdity no it didn't and it was short enough that it was it was just like oh look you get this really cool moment yeah they 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 i think again you hit the nail on the head if they had been like falling for a long time <laughs> and there was this whole fight of them switching and flipping off of lots of different bits of debris that would be a bit ridiculous but they touch touch ground pretty quick yeah so yeah yeah it was good i liked that fight a lot um anyways everybody gets like an antidote we get like like they're they're free they fly away everything's saved uh that's oh and we see how she gets the quinjet which i thought was fun yes leading uh nicely into infinity war yep and yeah. yelena's off saving widows yep off off doing stuff Um, one thing we didn't talk about, which it's kind of a small moment, but I liked, um, was I think it's in Budapest um, when they hide in like the, I don't know if it's air ducts, I think so, mm -hmm. um, in the train station, subway station. Yeah. Um, and she's like, oh, I hung out here for a while um, with what's his face. Um, I kind of liked that. There you go. I liked that yeah. moment. I that yeah, was... well, I mean, this is the kind of very, very, very niche, subtle fan service that is nice to have because ever since both Black Widow and Hawkeye have been introduced, their whole shtick has been talking about Budapest and the, all the things they did there. Obviously, I think it was Avengers when Loki was when Loki was in that little like containment thing that was meant for Hulk. And Black Widow was interrogating him. He talked about Drakov um, and Drakov's daughter. You know, like your your ledger is dripping red. You know, he, he, Clint told me everything about Drakov's daughter. Um, obviously, they didn't know what this was going to be at that time, but they're still they're following through. Um, and obviously, Budapest was the mission where Natasha went to kill Drakov um as the definitive proof to clint that she was defecting and therefore could join shield so her doing that was the thing that allowed her to become an avenger essentially mm. um proving loyalty to the to the west and you know all of that so and also like um in the where yelena and natasha meet for the first time where they fight the like arrow holes in the wall you know um suggesting that clint is just was just doing like target practice or something or just casually firing arrows off into the wall it's, it's that kind of just really subtle stuff and i think in the air ducks they were playing like noughts and crosses or something on the on the walls i really like what that did stuff. you just call it noughts and crosses Okay. That's that's what it's called. No, it's called tic tac toe. It's not called tic tac toe. <laughs> it definitely is. Noughts and crosses. Uh you guys are made up people. Um, anyways. <laughs> okay. Then we get the very end, the post credit scene is we get to my my biggest beef with this film. <gasps> My biggest beef. I'm actually like upset about this. So we get this moment where uh, Yelena goes to um, Natasha's grave. Mm -hmm. And we have this whole really emotional moment. And I actually started not like full crying, but like definitely like had a couple tears. I was really sad. I was, And I was like, like, I was like, oh, man, like this is like a really good moment. And then Valentina shows up. She does. Y'all. Y'all. Okay. Could we not just brainstorming here? Could we not have said cut second piece of credits, then second post credit scene, so that way you have a moment to be sad and cry 
instead of just being like, let's go. I don't care. I don't care. In fact, you could have just not put this in the film. So it feels pretty important, though. No, I'm too mad about it. You ruined my crying moment. You ruined my sad moment. What and... you, you, you didn't? You didn't like Yelena doing the little whistle to the tombstone. No, and I then, did. I'm saying then, then Valentina blowing her nose right after. No, I didn't. No. Ah. I was really actually I was really actually mad about that. I was like, okay, that was really stupid. Yeah. How easy how many times have they done like 10 post credit scenes and one set of credits? Could they have not done two? Yeah, but I think that like the fact that she interrupts her solemn moment is essential because it is an indictment on Valentina as a character, right? That she doesn't care. It it it, it disrupts uh, Yelena's grieving in the same way that it disrupts your grieving. And by doing so, you simultaneously are coalesced in terms of your emotions with Yelena, but also you get an insight into who Valentina is as a person. I don't care. Normally, I'm all about that storytelling. <laughs> Let me have a moment. You sound like the kind of person that would really hate Last of Us Part Two. You know, I'm just saying. It's like it was. Uh... I've not played it. I don't know. I'm not gonna say anything else. It's okay. It's okay. Um, do we have anything else that we want to talk about with this film? Any? E Easter eggs, any well, I mean, I mean, the reason teams, that any the reason that the reason that Valentine is there is pretty important. Is it? Well, I mean, pretty. Important. I'm still mad at her. Like it shows that Yelena is working for Valentina. So yeah, so they're doing like a, a secondary Avengers, right? Because she just got a Captain America. I mean, and now she has a Black not, Widow. Not necessarily. Um, but also the specific reason that she's there is relatively pertinent because she gives Yelena a target. She did. Who was it again? I forgot. Clint. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember. I was too upset about the interruption. Blaming N Natasha's death on him. Which just isn't true, but well, it isn't. It isn't true, but the world doesn't know that. Nope. The world just knows that him and her went on a mission, and she didn't come back, and she's dead. So the minutia of what happened that's irrelevant. Particularly How do people even know that they like went on a mission? Again, I mean, well, the the assumption that the Avengers went on a mission is probably you can discern common knowledge post end game. Yeah, yeah. The whole the whole general mission, but the fact that they went somewhere, I guess. Yeah, th like th I think that that's just a logic gap you have to jump, you know. I think you just you just kind of have to allow that one that okay. somehow some way they know that I have zero patience and, for Valentina after that. So, you I guess like if if you're really trying to copium and mm -hmm. defend them. them, you you could say that um, Natasha and Clint have a very obvious prevalent um, extended history with each other, like intangibly connected, like from the offset. Mm -hmm. So the assumption could be made that if the Avengers went on a mission, it would most likely, and again, in the eyes of the public who don't know all the details, most likely if Black Widow and Hawkeye are essentially a duo that are always together on missions, it wouldn't make sense that they were together in this Avengers thing where they're saving the world. Obviously, there is, a whole again, a whole load of minutia there that you have to cut out but from people that aren't there and don't have the context. Hmm. 
it, we know what the real world is like, right? People yeah. jump to assumptions and conclusions and whatnot, um, even if there is potential evidence or lack thereof that would suggest otherwise. Yeah. So I feel like guilty um, until proven innocent is kind of exactly, a, exactly. So uh, yeah, Yelena's uh, Yelena's on the hunt. Look out, Clint. Okay. Um, well, let's let's wrap up here. We got a couple things left. Uh, one before I forget, what are we watching next? We are diving into the very first. We're going back to a show. Okay. But we're diving into the first bit of um, Marvel animation. Interesting. Um, yes, and there is a reason. Trust me, uh, it's it's all logical. It is. I trust you. Yeah, uh, we're watching the first season of what if okay yes okay um okay let's see uh, 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 uh okay so then we also have to do ranking mm-hmm um, do you want to take a, a stab at where you think it might be? I legitimately have no idea. I would wager somewhere like upper mid of the list, but I could see it being anywhere. I don't think it, it's certainly not near the top. Um, I'm going to say a number. Okay. Okay. I'm going to say, without any knowledge of what's around it, I'm just going to say 13. Ooh, good guess, good guess. Um, a little low. Okay. I pushed it up a little bit higher than that. Um, it's number eight currently. Okay. I will say, um, I do want to note that I rearranged things. Oh. Um, slightly. I was kind of bugged with some of the order. Um, so I have slightly moved things around. So just to go over the things um, that are kind of affected by this shift. Um, so number one, Loki season one, Avengers Endgame, Infinity War, Black Panther, volume two of Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, Spider-Man Far From Home, then WandaVision then Black Widow, then Doctor Strange, then Guardians Volume 1, then Ant-Man. So those okay. were the ones that kind of got affected by the rearrange. Do I regret it? No. May I rearrange it again? Maybe. Maybe. Reserve the right to. Um, okay, let's let's do yours list. Let's see. Let me look. Let me look. Hmm, where is it? I'm going to guess... Somewhere in the range of 13 to 16. <laughs> You'd be correct. Um, it, it's it's 14 for me. Um, so above Spider-Man Homecoming. Indeed. Okay. And just below Falcon and Winter Soldier. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Which I think is is pretty obvious. Like I it would it would for me certainly be lower if it wasn't for Yelena. Um, I, but I think that that raises it just enough that I, whilst I love what Vulture did in Homecoming for Spider Man, his character, I mm -hmm. think that Yelena is such a hard carry in this film that it brings it up at least a few places. So that's fair. That's fair. I'll allow it. Thanks. <laughs> and, uh, I'm just gonna, you don't have to display this. And it's not a spoiler because you've seen all of these characters, but I'm going to show. I'm going to send you a picture in Discord of okay. potentially what uh, this whole Valentina thing is about. Is it Valentine's? Because if so, I'll be upset. Don't ruin Valentine's uh, Day no. for me. It, it's not. You ready? Mm-hmm. 
scared them scared. There you go. Interesting. No context, just. I'll show it on screen, you guys. Hold on. Holding. There you go. <gasps> <gasps> what does hmm. it mean? I don't know, but I'm still upset with her. <laughs> okay. Well, there you guys go. No context as to what that is. Um, but we're watching What If. I assume that we can watch it in one go. It doesn't need to be split. Yeah, I would I would I would say so. Um feel free to disagree with me if you start watching and think that there needs yeah. to be more discussion we'll but I probably think watch pretty... the whole thing yeah now i just have to remember to not procrastinate because i get really miserable when i try and watch a whole tv show in one day in one day you're really really doing it like that that's usually how i've been watching these shows yeah damn and then especially with the falcon and the winter soldier i was like oh my god this never ends Yikes. Um, I have to watch it over multiple days, otherwise I hate my life. But I procrastinate frequently. Um, okay, you guys. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with us today. Special shout out to our current patrons. We have Alpaca Tom, Fabulous Brianna, Brianna's mom, Brianna's brother, Lindsay, Nikolai at night, Cypher Primus, Brendan Myers, Marcus O'Neill, Lillian, Mimi J, David Hotright, or yeah, I said that right. Dave Harp, um, the Xbox Expansion Pass, and Lee Navarro. Uh, Sam. Where can people find you? Anywhere and everywhere at Sam Heaney, H E A N E Y. You can find me at Fabulous Brianna, F A B U L I S T B R E A N N A. We will see you guys in two weeks, your time. I don't know when our time. <laughs> Bye.